What's up, YouTube? It's time for a review of the new Hell Yeah record, Undeniable, out this past Friday, June 3rd. Now, with this metal supergroup's first three records, I felt pretty similarly about all of them. Each of them had, like, two or three tracks that hit the mark in terms of being pretty solid groove metal, but then the rest of the track list would just be littered with unimaginative ideas. Whether it be the boring riffs, or really the biggest issue, Chad Gray's brainless lyrics, which was especially frustrating to me, because take an album like Stampede, for instance. There are songs on there like Better Man, Stand or Walk Away, which, regardless if you like the music, are decent lyrically. But then you'd have songs like Pole Rider and It's On, which especially when paired with the drab instrumental ideas that they were paired with, lyrically and musically just offered nothing. So while I could recognize that there's not anything inherently wrong with being a good-natured metal band that likes to play heavy riffs and sing about drinking, I personally was not a fan. Then in 2014, they put out their fourth record, Blood for Blood, which was a more intense and overall more focused and more serious affair. To my ears, their production caught up with them and they were finally able to sonically capture that in-your-face yet crystal clear aggression that it feels like they were always going for. And they wrote better songs. I mean, I still wasn't crazy about it because it was mostly still pretty generic stuff, like listening to a track like Die Motherfucker. I mean, come on. But overall, it was a record that was more sure of itself than their previous three. So given my feelings on Blood for Blood, I wanted to give Undeniable this new record a fair shot and see if it could continue this upward trajectory. Now there have been some shakeups in the Hell Yeah lineup. Undeniable is their second record to feature Christian Brady on guitar who replaced Greg Tribbett and Kyle Sanders on bass who replaced Bob Zilla. Now production wise it adheres to that same winning formula of Blood for Blood. The guitars are crisp yet they're chunky and Vinnie Paul's drum sound came out stellar once again. So no issues in that department. Let's dive right into the track list which when you account for interludes, is really just 10 originals and one cover song. Right off the bat, I'll say that Undeniable does a better job of balancing its moods than Hell Yeah's past releases. Like, when I look at the five tracks on here that I really dig, each of them has their own identity. I'll start with the song X, which is a great choice for an opener. It kicks the album off with Vinnie Paul singing this breakneck pace, and Chad Gray keeping up vocally by essentially spewing out his words a mile a minute, which creates this real cohesive assault. No matter how throwaway the lyrics may or may not be, it works tremendously. And that catchy chorus riff, it's busy, but it lets the vocals on top of it breathe. It gives them just enough room. Another one is Start a Riot, which is actually sequenced directly after the album's big ballad, so it bounces things out beautifully by being the most aggressive song on here. It's another one with a banging chorus riff. And yeah, it's easy to lay into this song for its cheesy lyrics, but here's the thing. The reason I've taken issue with Hell Yeah's lyrics in the past is because they were also accompanied by uninteresting music. So it became a real shitstorm. But the reality is, this band has never pretended to be something they're not. From the beginning, they've always been transparent about tracks like this being just about moshing or having a good time. And let's be honest, metal isn't always held to the same accountability as other genres in terms of its lyrical content. So if the music is up to par, I mean, you can always prefer more sophisticated lyrical ideas, but this is a track that executes well on its intentions. My favorite track on the whole LP is actually Love Falls, the big ballad that directly precedes Star a Riot. I mean, you can be a purist and shrug this one off, but the reality is that they have an anthem on their hands. It's just a knockout chorus. But beyond that, What's going to always keep me entertained about this song is that in the second half of the verses, they squeeze in this shamelessly poppy Def Leppard style guitar overdub. If you want to catch it in the first verse, fast forward directly to 45 seconds. I mean, you can't even be mad at it at this point. It's so blatant that all you can do is just sit back and just ironically applaud it. Actually, the entirety of the verses kind of feel Def Leppardish, don't they? Or like maybe U2-esque even? But in all, in all seriousness, this is what I mean by balance of moods. Tracks like X and Start a Riot would lose their appeal without a total come down like Love Falls. There's also Leap of Faith, which first and foremost, 
I have to point out how awesome Vinnie Paul's snare drum sounds in this track's subdued verses. And the hook's another winner. I mean, there's a reason Mudvayne sold the number of records that they did. Chad Gray has a real palatable voice, and he knows how to construct a melody. Just listen back to one of those big Mudvayne songs, especially the melodic ones like, like Happy. You can't deny it. And another thing on this track that I really like is in the last chorus, when that melodic guitar comes in, that melodic lead guitar, that's a real nice touch. And the song Human rounds out this trifecta of tracks that all have a legitimate chance at active rock radio stations like Octane. You know, the vocals are gruff all the way through, but there's no harsh screams. These are the type of tracks, kind of like with Moth off of Blood for Blood, that will take Hell Yeah to the next level. But then there's a good chunk of this album that's just full of aimless, by-the-numbers aggression. Like, Blood Plague is one of those songs where, like, it's not bad, but it's just so replaceable. You get the sense while you're listening to this song that they could have written 12 of these. <laughs> they probably have. Probably more than 12. The lyrics are just stereotypically violent, and they don't take you anywhere that 90,000 other metal songs can't. I felt the same way about the album closer, Grave, which is a song that's full of heaviness, but heaviness that's not aimed anywhere in particular. Not to mention the verse riff is just Machine Head's The Blood, The Sweat, The Tears with a slightly different tale. And the strings in this song don't really add anything. They're just kind of there to distract you from the not so exciting metal song being played underneath them. Also applicable here is the generic Live or Die, which does have a bunch of riffs that I can latch onto, particularly the verse riff and that part that doubles as the intro and the pre-chorus. But then by the time I got to that elementary bridge riff, that's that's where the song really lost me. I just feel like Hell Yeah are at their best, their most convincing, their most potent, when there's some sort of message behind their music and the emotions reach beyond just that typical metal anger aimed at nobody and nothing in particular. I think Human and Love Falls are excellent examples of this. And even a song like X, which does contain a lot of that typical rage, there's a theme to latch on to, particularly in the bridge when they're talking about being a metalhead and kind of standing by that. When the anger is aimed at nothing and nobody is when this album loses its touch for me. And I don't want to get into that horrible, god-awful cover of the Phil Collins song, I Don't Care Anymore, but I will say that it's my least favorite track on here and it does absolutely nothing to justify its existence. I realize that there's some lost dime bag guitar parts in there, but still... Between between this and the Volbeat record, June 3rd was not a good day for heavy metal cover songs. So to wrap it up here, Undeniable isn't necessarily this major upshift in quality, but it's another step up. To my ears, they made some real progress with Blood for Blood, and they made improvements on it on Undeniable. I could say I'm pleasantly surprised, but to me, it's always been apparent that this band is capable of something cool. They just have to execute and hopefully they can continue to better themselves with their next release. Undeniable gets a 6 out of 10 from me. As always, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe, leave a comment, or shoot me a message so we can continue to talk music, and I'll see you guys soon.